Charles is a great young leader, and disclaimers follow all of his introductions, so he selected uh, me to give an introduction to Lord Skidelsky because uh, no disclaimers were possible. Uh, the idealism that Brooks represents uh, is matched by idealism uh, of a more continental style by uh, Robert Skidelsky. Uh, and uh, if there were a way to unify the lessons of Adam Smith and the theory of moral sentiments and uh, his other more famous book, it would be in the person and teachings of Keynes and Robert Skidelsky. Uh, Robert, we're enormously grateful that you could be here. This is a, a, a an important time for the CED. As you and many of you know, this organization 62 years ago was created as a kind of public-private partnership to push forward the lessons of the Keynesian revolution uh, in the post-war world with changes in resource allocation, uh, people coming back from the war, what do we do with all this uh, defense uh, infrastructure we've created. And here came this unique public-private partnership that somehow blended the best in uh, public-private partnerships. Uh, Robert has important lessons for us in that because Keynes himself, as I learned from your teaching, sir, uh, have, uh, they matured. Uh, and one of the things that Robert brings to us is a, a platform for rethinking the formulaic approach we took to fiscal policies, uh, both privately and publicly. And so we are enormously grateful to the CED for giving Robert this platform to bring us back to our fundamentals, bring us back to our origins. Uh, but uh, more important to teach us that uh, uncertainty is really the law of the universe, that uncertainty in uh, actions and outcomes. Indeterminacy is the word I think is uh, the most apt here. Indeterminacy in forces, actions, and effects uh, are governing most of what we do. Uh, Brooks uh, referred to this in, in some of his closing meditation, but the wonderful thing about Robert's long shadow uh, is that uh, when Krugman said in his own review of Robert's book, and I'm sorry the great man is not here to challenge Robert in public uh, and to join in the chorus of approval, but he said that uh, the publication of this book, copies of which are available to you, uh, Keynes, uh, The Return of the Master, uh, that this represented uh, really the revival of Keynes and that we were entering a new age of Keynes. And one must quarrel a little bit by saying that it is a larger stage for Keynes, a larger stage that Robert is principally instrumental for providing. Krugman also said that we're in the new Keynesian age and Robert Skodelsky is still the best guide. And so it's my pleasure as a long student of this modest gentleman, to introduce Robert Skidelsky, the, uh, the guide that Krugman promised, but also a provocateur and a comforter, Robert Skidelsky. It, it's, ladies and gentlemen, it's, uh, it's uh, becoming habitual to um, make disclaimers, but I don't uh, feel I need to make any disclaimers um, uh, um, for what Landon said, uh, I, but uh, of course I'm too modest to accept it all at its face value. Um, I enjoyed, I enjoyed uh, uh, David's uh, remarks about politicians. Um, it seems to me that what he, uh, what he um, uh, called their exceptional social skills um, were really uh, an infinite capacity for boredom. <laughs> No, no mean, no mean um, skill for success in uh, many walks of life. Um, I, uh, I have um, in the in the United Kingdom uh, equally important in the life of an MP is an almost infinite stomach capacity for bad wine. 
And uh, one of my friends who had just recently retired from being an MP, Member of Parliament, said that the greatest relief um, in, his, uh, uh, in his retirement would be to enjoy his suppressed taste for good wine. That comes from endless constituency meetings, of course. Well, I'm very, very honored to have been asked to be here because um, the Committee for Economic Development was founded at a momentous point in, in world history and also very, very much at the center of my own um, historical interest. And, and the most prominent person in its founding um, was in 1942 was Beardsley Rummel the Falstaffian businessman and philanthropist who was known as Rommel to his uh, opponents, uh, conservative critics. And he's chiefly remembered as the inventor of the pay-as-you-go system. But he has another important claim to fame, which I think is, is, um, cer certainly needs to be re remembered. And that is, as Herbert Stein tells it in his magisterial book, The Coming of the Fiscal Revolution to America, Beardsley Rummel made anti-depression policy acceptable to conservatives. And he did so by linking it to tax cuts rather than public spending increases. This led to a particularly, I think of as a particularly American phenomenon of supply side or Laffer curve Keynesianism, um, which took hold in the 1980s. Um, Laffer's idea was that if you cut marginal tax rates, especially um, for top earners, you would encourage the beneficiaries to prodigiously, w prodigiously harder work so that any deficit uh, resulting from the tax cut would be rapidly closed by the extra revenues produced by the faster rate of economic growth. And so you could have de deficits which automatically produce uh, surpluses. Acceptance of supply-side Keynesianism by the right uh, explains the otherwise peculiar indifference of conservatives to budget deficits. Um, these were all right, provided they were associated with tax cuts. Who famously said, deficits don't matter? I believe it was not Keynes, but Glenn Hubbard, chairman of George W. Bush's Council of Economic Advisers. It's true that conservatives favored one type of deficit spending, and that was on the military. Military spending, however large and wasteful, was largely immune from conservative criticism. Reagan's mixture of tax cuts and increases in military spending produced the largest peacetime deficits till that time in American history. And the same conservative pattern developed under the second Bush. One of the paradoxes of all this is that the biggest deficits in, 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 in the, since the end of the war have been um, associated with Republican administrations vehement in their denunciation of government profligacy. Uh, and the one fiscal conservative in recent years has been, of course, Democratic President Bill Clinton. Uh, now, of course, it's... Now we're in a new, a new phase. In response to the biggest economic downturn since the Second World War, the Obama administration has doubled the deficit he inherited from Bush to howls of execration from uh, many economists and lobbyists who, oblivious to the effect of the stimulus in, vert in averting a much more serious recession, demand immediate fiscal consolidation not, of course, by raising taxes, but by cutting government spending, especially on social programs. And the same is true in, the, in, in, in Britain at the moment. Well, I'll return to the question of debts and deficits a little later, but I've got to say first something about my new book, Keynes, The Return of the Master. I thought, I thought I'd finished with Keynes. I really did. Uh, when I finished my 25-year-old, my 25-year work, um, four or five years ago, and I said, well, I thought, well, enough is enough. I've got other things to do with my life. Um, then on the 15th of September 2008, Lehman Brothers declared bankruptcy, and Keynes was suddenly back in fashion. I started writing this new book, Keynes, The Return of the Master, on the 1st of January of this year, 
and after helpful comments from Landon, among others, um, I delivered the manuscript three months later. 